Okay, so I see that my voice is coming on here. Okay, I'll try to stay in front of the computer as much as possible in order to maximize how much you're able to hear. Okay, so this this part of the lab, this is the anatomical terminology. This this particular PowerPoint shouldn't take that long. So I'll go to the next slide. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to talk about is the anatomical positions and planes. So after we finish this PowerPoint, I'm going to have part of the room, part of the groups, go and dissect the banana. We don't have the rat. We can't do that. But I'm going to show you what frame of reference you need to look at the banana with. Okay? So there are three planes that we're concerned about. There's sagittal. And sagittal would be basically if you split the body into a left or right half. Okay, does that make sense? So if you split the body into a left or right half, that's a sagittal plane. Okay, so what's interesting to note is there's a lot of organs in the body that have a left side and a right side. Okay, so for example, kidneys. Okay, have you heard that there is a left kidney and there's a right kidney? Right, does that make sense? In fact, one interesting note, Ms. Punt actually has a removed kidney. She got a cancer for one of her kidneys and now it's gone. They had to remove it because it had a tumor. Okay, so notice the sagittal plane is splitting you into a left or right half. Make sense? If I have the frontal plane, that's splitting me into what we refer to as an anterior half and a posterior half. Okay, so anytime you see anterior, we'll get to this in, in several minutes. Anterior in the context of humans is where you're looking at the front part of the body. So if you're looking at the face, the chest, the stomach, all that stuff, that's all on the anterior side of the human body. If I'm talking about posterior, that's anything on the back side. Okay, does that make sense? By the way, in this class, is there anybody who's not going into a human science? Is anyone going into an animal science? No? Okay, so I'll try to make this as, since no one's going into an animal science, I'll do this only with respect to humans. Okay, so frontal separates into an anterior side and a posterior side in the back. Okay, transverse is a little bit different. Transverse is where you cut it into a top half and a bottom half, okay? So for example, if I have a transverse plane, okay, what we get is, depending on where the plane is, for example, the plane right here, in fact, let me get the pen out while I'm thinking of this. So we have a pen and looks like it's not really working very well. Let me switch to slideshow, see if that works. From current slide, see if that works. Okay, this is not good not able to use the pen. Well, I'll fix this for next week. But anyways, the basic idea behind this is if you have a transverse plane, you get what's referred to as a superior region above the plane. If you have any transverse plane, anything above that plane in the context of a human is superior, right? If you go beneath that plane, it's referred to as inferior. Does that make sense? Making sense? Okay. So for example, what I could ask on the test with respect to a plane is I could, I could essentially give you a picture and I could draw a plane in it, okay? just to give you an idea of what I'm going to ask. So in the context of this plane right here, anybody just name something that's inferior to that plane, anything. Anything that's inferior to the transverse plane. The foot. In a, in a question like that on the exam, you could literally name anything. I'm just concerned that you understand what it means to be inferior to a plane. Likewise, I could ask, name anything that's superior to that plane, anything. The head, right. You could name a multitude of things. In terms of what's superior to that, you could say, if you knew any muscles, you could say pectoralis major. That's the chest muscle. You could say the bicep brachii. That's the bicep muscle. Anything would suffice. Does that make sense, kind of what I could ask on the test? So I would give you a plane and say, you know, for example, what would be superior to it, what would be inferior to it. Does that make sense? Okay. So going on to the next part. Um, basically what I'll say is, you know, you have this, you have a, a diagram in your book, in your lab manual, that has all of these um, body markings, okay? Um, some of them are less important than others. I think that this figure is really good. I got this off of Google, basically. And this is showing um, 
the various ones that are extremely important. So, yes, you are responsible for all of these on the test. All of these that are on here are responsible for. We'll go over some of the important ones and kind of how I would ask that question. But suffice it to say, these ones right here, for my semester, don't notice it's starred three times. If something's starred three times, that probably means it's important, right? So I starred it three times and said, for this semester, my favorites are the following. Okay, so sternum. Does everybody have an idea what the sternum is? Okay, the sternum is kind of the, the bone right here that is beneath, it, the bone that is kind of in the middle of your pectoralis major muscles. So because you have the sternum there, that general region of the chest is called the sternal region. Okay, in fact, whenever you name these regions of the body, you're welcome, like for instance, if you were talking about the bicep right here, the bicep would be in the brachial region. Right. Is that clear to everybody? Biceps in the brachial region. So what you're welcome to do when you do this is if you're talking about the bicep and I ask you what region it's in, you would say brachial region. So these, these positions on the body, you attach a region after it to describe it. Make sense? So we'll get some practice in this, but suffice to say, you need to know all of these, but these are certainly some of my favorites. Let me ask you a question. If I'm looking at, uh, let's say, the elbow, what region of the body would be descriptive of the elbow? Do you think? Hmm? This one right here? Yeah. Antecubital. Right. So you would need to memorize these, but particularly the ones that are really important for this semester are going to be these. Generally, what I'm concerned about are things that involve, that are around muscles, around bones. Those are really important, although I do ask you to know frontal, otic, and oral. So if I'm talking about the mouth, what is that? Oral. If I'm talking about the ears, what is that? Right. Otic. Okay. So if I'm talking about the forehead, that's frontal. Okay. So hopefully you'll get familiar with these pieces of terminology. Okay. So let's actually, I think the next slide is going to be practice problem. Okay. So like I said, anytime you see the term test yourself, that's basically a type of question that could appear on the exam. Okay. Something like this could appear in both the, the practical part or also the multiple choice part. In terms of these anatomical terminologies, these are, these are not part of the essays. Okay. I don't have any of this in the essays. These are more just terminology type things that could appear multiple choice and practical. Okay, so um, on the test, I won't give you this. Um, what I'll probably do is I'll give you this picture, but the names will be blurred out or something like that. Okay, but here's the question. The bicep muscles are located in what region of the body? Brachial, right. So if you're looking at the body, this is the brachial, okay? And anything beneath that, that's not where the biceps are. In general, you're looking at this region right there. Um, what's another muscle that you would find in that region also? Hmm? Triceps. Triceps, like tricep brachii are on the, so if you have the, if you're in the anatomical position, so one of the things that's also important, if I go back, there's a region, reason I have this picture right here that I failed to mention. Th this position right here, how they're standing, this is referred to as anatomical position. So anatomical position, you have your legs a little bit spaced apart. You have your arms extended, not necessarily, a t you know, you know, next to your um, legs. They're a little bit spaced apart. And then the key is that your palms are facing forward. And if you stand like this, this is an anatomical position. So in general, when you're using pieces of terminology like we're going to get to like proximal, distal, medial, things like that, you're doing it with this frame of reference. Everything has to be in anatomical position. That's how you describe things. Does that make sense? So if I'm in anatomical position, remember how I said anterior was on the front side of the body? So if anterior is the front side of the body and I'm in anatomical position, would the biceps be anterior or posterior? Hmm? Anterior? Yeah, biceps would be anterior. They're on the front side of the arm. Okay, which means that the triceps would be given what position will make? Right, in general, the triceps are going to be on the back of the arm, so they're on the posterior side of the arm. Does that make sense? Okay, 
So you have to define anatomical position with some frame of reference. This is how you do it. Okay, so this would be an example of a multiple choice question. Let's do some more. Get some more practice. Okay, I've already done this one, but let's test your memory. The ears are located in the blank region of the body. Odin, right. Okay, does that make sense? So if I come over here, I notice the odic region is exactly where the ears are. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. All right. Mothers feed their babies milk through which region? Mammary. So the mammaries, you'll actually notice when you go over to that female model, what they've done is they've taken off the, the exterior muscles and they've exposed the, um, the organs underneath. But you'll notice that one actually has a breast that has breast tissue on it. So that would be, I could, I could have the model out, okay? In fact, what I could also do is, um, I don't want to leave this. What I could do is I could, see that, see that, um, the muscle, musculature that's off, okay? What I could essentially do is I could just have that musculature by itself and that, that, that breast is attached to it. I could put a sticker on the breast and say, what region of the body is it? Does that make sense? And you would say man, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, going on to the next one. I think there's another practice problem. Okay, so this time we're worried about something on the posterior side. Notice how on the, the left left hand figure, that's the anterior side in general. Um, and then the one on the right is the posterior side. So people sit on which region of the body? Gluteal, right. And when we do muscles, you'll learn about the gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, and all that stuff. So that's to come. But yeah, people sit on the gluteal part of their body, okay? Um, has anyone ever heard of, um, let me see, is it even on this picture? Yeah, has anyone ever heard of that, that fad that came out called planking? Never heard of that? If you've heard of it, let me ask you the question. If you're, if you're planking, approximately what part of your, what region of the body are you putting your weight on? You're putting it on the anterior side, that's the direction, but specifically what region of the body? About. Yeah, you're, you're putting some of it in this abdominal region. Specifically, a lot of the weight goes on the navel, umbilical region, as far as I know. You can put a lot of weight on that. Does that make sense? If you're standing, if you're standing, where is the weight positioned on? Hmm? I'm sorry, I can't hear. You said tarsal? Plantar. Plantar, okay, right. The plantar is what describes the bottom of the foot, the sole of your foot, okay? So um, mo in terms of most organisms that you know walk on four legs, Usually what happens is their hands greatly resemble the bottoms of their feet. Okay, so if, in fact, if you look at the, the, this part of your hand right here, structurally, it may not look like it, but in terms of how, where the thick skin is, the, this part of your hand resembles the bottom of your feet. Okay, it has that thick skin. We'll talk about that when we get to the integumentary system. But in terms of we're two-legged, but in terms of four-legged organisms, their palmar region is very similar to the plantar region. Does that make sense? Okay. So people sit on the gluteal region of their body. Let's go to the next one. Okay. This is a very important slide. Okay. Um, very, very important. There's one directional term that's not on here. Actually, two. And I'll go over those when we get done with these. Okay. So... First, let's. We're, I, I, I found out just recently that everybody here is concerned with humans, human anatomy, physiology, not necessarily animals. So I'm going to orient this class towards humans. Okay. So whenever somebody says in directionality, superior or inferior, are we talking about horizontal? Or are we talking about vertical? What are we talking about? Vertical. So you're assuming once again the human is in anatomical position. Okay. So if I'm in anatomical position, that implies that my head would be superior, say, to my shoulders, right? You're just talking about things in terms of vertical position. So um, what I could ask on the test, what I could ask essentially is, you know, I could say, okay, 
let's look at the belly button. That's a good reference point. I could say, just to have you understand what it is, to test your understanding, I could say, name anything superior to the belly button, which is the um, umbilical region, right? So name something that's superior to that. Anything. Hmm? Anything. Yeah, deltoids. Is that what you said? Yeah. So on the test, I could give you some kind of position on the body, and I could say name something superior to that. Likewise, I could also say something name something inferior to that. So for example, if I gave you the knee bone and I say we're in an anatomical position, you would name something inferior to the knee. You could literally just say foot. Okay, It could be anything. Um, you could also say something inferior to the knee. You could say the tibia. That's certainly a bone in your shin. You could say something like that. If I said same, name something superior to the knee, you could say the femur. That's the bone in your thigh. Okay? If you know a muscle that's there, you could name that. If I said name something superior to the knee, what? by the way, does anyone know what muscle this is right here at the thigh? Quadricep femoris, right. So if you, if you knew that, I would accept quadricep, not quadricep femoris. You could say either one. But if I said say, name something superior to the knee that's still in the leg, you could say quadricep. You could even say one of the hamstring muscles. Those are also superior to it. Does that direction make sense? Okay. So now let's go over to medial and internal. Um, these are really important because um, sometimes, like for example, um, let me look at a model real quick. Um, I'm going to have to deviate from this a little bit. Actually, maybe I can. Um, in fact, I can probably do it while I'm over here. So everybody look at that model right there. Okay. So let's for a moment assume we're in anatomical position. And by the way, on the exam or any quiz or anything, you should assume that we're in anatomical position. Okay? That's the assumption you can make. So for example, if I'm talking about medial or, or internal, okay? Does that say internal? Lateral. Lateral. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. It's lateral. Okay, my mistake. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so medial, what it means is medial is a directionality that points towards the midline of the body. So what you should imagine is that you imagine that if you have a person, let me write this up here. If you have a person, you imagine splitting them in half like this. So you imagine driving a plane exactly like that, okay, right through the dead center of their body. Anything that is closer to the midline, that's what you call medial, okay? If it's farther away from the midline, meaning it's moving away from the midline, you call that lateral, okay? So let me give you an example. If you look at that model right there, um, you should notice, and I think we all have an intuition behind this, that I think if you look at the head, you would see that the ears are farther away from the midline than the brain, right? Does that make sense to everybody? So in that context, you would say the ears are lateral to the brain. You have to say it with respect to something else. Does that make sense? So I would say the ears are lateral to the brain. Okay, so what I could do on the exam is I could I could I could put a sticky note on the brain, on that model, for example. And I could say name something that is lateral to the brain, or whatever it is. And you could say ear. Does that make sense? Okay. What's what's another thing that you could say or all we're concerned about is this midline, okay? What's something else you could say that is definitely lateral to the brain? Arms, like the shoulders, the deltoid. With respect to that midline plane that goes through here, the shoulders are definitely lateral to that. Does that make sense? Make sense? Okay. Likewise, if something is towards the midline, you would make the argument that that is, in fact, medial to whatever you're talking about. So an example of that... Um, for example, let's look at, if we look at that model over there, in fact, you could look at either one, but if you take the genitals, for instance, okay, and you compare that to um, the hip muscles, okay, which one is more medial? Genitals, right. They're more medial. They're closer to the midline of the body. Does that make sense? Whereas the hip muscles are farther from the midline, so they're the lateral ones. Does that make sense? 
Okay, good. The next one we're worried about, this is a really important one, by the way. The next two are probably the most important ones for, for our purposes here. So make sure you pay attention to these, these four terms on the right. So we have proximal and distal. Okay, This one is um, really, I think it makes more of an intuitive sense if you think about distal first. So distal has the same prefix as like distance, right? If you if you have a large distance, you're farther away, right? Does that make sense to everybody? So for example, if I take my arm, for example, okay, and I, I was to extend it like this in anatomical position, what would theoretically be most distal or of the farthest distance from where my arm intersects my body? The fingertips, right. So what I could say based on that is the most distal part of my arms are the fingertips. Does that make sense? That's the most distal part. And you could even say that, say, if I compared my fingers, say, to my elbow, which one's more distal? So what's distal, the elbow or the fingertips? Fingertips. So you have to say this with respect to something else. So I could say... The fingertips are distal to the elbow, meaning they're farther away from my torso. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what could be if? What's another thing that could theoretically be distal to my elbow? The wrist. That's something else. You could say the hand in general. Okay. What I'm concerned about is you just being able to tell. I, I'm just checking your understanding to make sure you understand what distal is. So on the exam, what I could do is I could get a sticky note of some kind, go over to that skeleton, and I could put, say, um, on the elbow, I could put, you know, number 10 or whatever. Okay? Yeah. I grabbed that. Okay. So, like, I could put I could put a sticky note on, send number 10 on the elbow or something. And I could say, name something distal to the elbow. And all I care about is you know what it is, so you could put anything. If I say name something distal to the elbow, you can put hand, finger, thumb, wrist, anything. Is that, do you kind of understand what to expect on it? Okay. So if I'm talking about the leg, I could point to the knee. What's something that's distal to the knee? The toes, the foot, anything like that. You could say the shin bone. Okay. Eventually we'll learn what those things are called. But as long as you understand what it means to be distal, and in general with distal, you're really just concerned with the arms and legs. That's generally what we're concerned with. I'm only going to test you on arms and legs. Make sense? Okay. Proximal. Whenever you hear the term proximity, it kind of means you're close by. So, if, for instance, you know, I'm coming in close proximity to my backpack, right? It means I'm getting closer to something. So when you say a part of the body is proximal to something else, you're essentially saying that it's closer to the, the torso of the body. Does that make sense? So if I gave you the elbow, what's something that's proximal to the elbow? Anything? Hmm? Shoulder. Shoulder. The deltoid could be proximal to the elbow. You could also include the bicep. Or the tricep, anything, or you can include the humerus. Anything that tells me that you understand what that means. Does that make sense? Okay. The last one that's really important has to do with the depth of something in your body. So what we're essentially going to run into, and I, I, I obviously can't use the pin on here, I'll have to fix that, is you can encounter some organs. Uh, one example is the adrenal glands, where you essentially have this, um, oops, you essentially have this, okay, there we go. You essentially have kind of a shell for the organ, okay? Where this, you have to imagine this is in three-dimensional space. So it's like a sphere. Not exactly, but for all intents and purposes, we can consider it that. What you can essentially say is that the outermost layer, like, like for instance, if you looked at the, the Earth, right? The Earth has an outermost layer, the crust. You go deep to that, there's the mantle, and then the inner part's the core. So in the context of the Earth, you would say that the crust is the most superficial part, right? So if you have anything that's layered like this, you say that the outermost layer is the super, the superficial layer. Does that make sense? So um, superficial is the, is the outermost. If you go to deep, deep is going to be the innermost layer. Does that make sense? That's generally what you call deep. 
So we're not going to concern ourselves much with the adrenal gland in this class. That's mostly an AMP2 topic. But the adrenal gland is an excellent example of something that you can call superficial or deep. Okay, and in fact, one of our practice problems, I think it might be the next one, is actually concerned with that. Okay, so let's go on to the practice problems. Does it, by the way, does this all make sense, everybody? Okay, let's go on. So, okay, this is the adrenal gland, by the way. Okay, so what they've essentially done here is, let me point to it. This right here, it's obviously not spherical, but this is essentially the adrenal gland. And they've taken this little box right here and they've blown it up, okay? So this part where they say capsule, this is technically the most superficial layer. Does that make sense? It's on the outside of the adrenal glands. And as you go down in this little picture right here, it gets deeper and deeper. Does that make sense? And you can't really see it there, but can everyone read that, by the way? I mean, okay. So the adrenal gland is shown to the right. Which layer is the deepest? So what you'll do essentially is you look at this right here, this little cross section of the adrenal glands, and you'll say which one is most inside this organ. Which one is it? Medulla, right. So not only do you have a medulla in the brain, you also have a medulla in your adrenal glands. Okay. So the, adre the medulla or medulla would be the answer to this one. Does that make sense? Okay, if we go on to the next one, Adrenal gland is shown to the right. Which layer is the most superficial out of the choices there? Which one is it? Right, the zona glomerulosa. You'll talk about these three layers in, in A and P2 when you do the endocrine system. Okay, that's where these become important. So, for example, if you're looking at that picture over there, okay, um, you notice that if you, as you start superficial, you start with the zona glomerulosa, and you don't have to know any of this, by the way. I'm just using this as an example. But you look and you say, okay, what's deep to the zona glomerulosa? Well, initially what's deep is the zona fasciculata. Does that make sense to everybody? If you go just deep to the glomerulosa, you find the zona fasciculata. If you go just deep to that, you get the zona reticularis, and then you go to the deepest layer to the medulla. So when you say something's deep to something else, you're saying that, for example, the zona reticularis is deep to the zona glomerulosa. Does that make sense? You could say the medulla is deep to the zona fasciculata. Whatever's the innermost part of your reference, that's the deepest part. Whatever's on the outside of the organ, that's the superficial part. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what you need to be aware of. So for example, um, I'm trying to think of a good example where this would happen. Um, for example, um, if I gave you, for example, if I gave you the skull, like I could, I could go over there and I could put a sticky note on the skull for the uh, practical part. I could say, name anything that's deep to the skull. What would be an example? The brain. The brain's deep to the skull. Okay. If I did the same thing but said superficial, what's something that's superficial to the, the skull? Anything hair, skin, really anything that's integumentary in nature. You'll do the integumentary system for exam two in both lecture and lab. So does that make sense on what to expect on the exam? Everyone kind of have an idea? Um, what I'll essentially do is I'll put some practice problems up like this just to get you in the right frame of thinking, okay? I think we have a couple more practice problems. Okay, this is something you don't have to know now. Um, this is just for your reference, and you'll eventually learn all this stuff in lecture, and I'll test you over it in lab. Um, it looks imposing, but I think you'll get it as you go on. So the thing you have to keep in mind is this region right here, as you go down in this picture, this is going inside your skin, whereas this layer right here is the outermost layer. This layer right here, which you can see, is called the stratum corneum. This is the layer that you actually see. Okay, it's the visible part. You go down, you're getting deeper. Does that make sense? So there's different layers of your skin. So my question to you is, the most superficial layer of the skin is what? Right, the stratum cordium. That's the one that's on the, on the top. It's the one that's visible. So it's the outermost layer, therefore it's the most superficial. Does that make sense? Okay. Go to the next one. 
Okay, so this is superior inferior stuff, okay? The most superior organ of the body out of the ones shown there is what? The brain, right. Um, if I'm looking, and you can certainly, um, you can certainly look at the models and kind of deduce this. Which one would be the most inferior out of those? Do you think? Ovary? What's that? So look, look at the models. So the, the heart is sort of, you could almost imagine it, it's on the left, sort of the left side of your body, right behind the pectoralis major. If you look at that model over there, do you see where the liver is? It's, it's, that's the real color of the liver. It's kind of brownish, almost maroon, but definitely brownish. And just a little bit inferior to that is the ovary. Okay, does that make sense? By the way, when you take apart that model, it's pregnant. So that's just something to expect. I didn't expect that when I was in the class. That model is apparently pregnant. So, okay. So, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. In ana so you can certainly look at the models if you need to. In anatomical position, the most inferior organ of the body is what? And by the way, the rectus abdominis that's the six pack. Okay. So which one of those is going to be the most inferior organ? Femur. What's, what, what, what's the common name for the femur? Not the shin. Thigh bone. Right. It's, 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 if you consider the arm as being homologous to the leg, the humerus in here is homologous to the femur. Make sense? Okay. And here's another practice problem. True or false? I'm, by the way... I'm not going to give you true-false on the test. I hate those. I hated them as a student. I'm not going to give you true-false. Okay? So you won't ever see this. This is just for your practice. The gluteus maximus. Okay? You'll learn these muscles later on. The gluteus maximus, just so you know. Uh, oops, wrong end. So this is the gluteus maximus. They're pointing to it. It's basically um, the posterior side of your butt. Okay? The gluteus maximus is posterior to the pectoralis major which is the chest muscle. They show it on her. So which one is the posterior one? Gluteus maximus. Okay. So in this case, what is it, true or false? It's true. So the gluteus maximus is posterior to the chest muscle. And by the way, um, in a question like this, if this was like on the practical part, um, at this point, I would not expect you to know gluteus maximus pectoralis major. I would actually give you these names. Okay, I'd give you the picture and you'd kind of have to think about it, but I would give you all that information. Does that make sense? So you don't have to memorize those yet. You'll eventually have to memorize them, but not now. Okay. And I think this is the last one. Here's the last one. Okay. The blank is proximal to the bicep muscle. Okay, so remember proximal and distal. If I have something distal, you can kind of think of it as being closer to the fingertips or closer to the toes, right? That's the distal one. The proximal one is closest to this torso region up here. So if I'm talking about what's proximal to the bicep muscle, which one is that? So let's kind of go through this. Um, hand. How does the hand relate to the, to the bicep? It's distal. The hand is distal, okay, in both arms. The ulna, the ulna, by the way, is in your forearm. Okay, so is the ulna proximal or distal to the bicep? It's distal. The ulna is going to be distal. Okay, pectoralis major, okay, that doesn't even apply here. Because when you're talking about proximal and distal, you're talking about with respect to just the arm or just the leg. Okay, the, is the pectoralis major, for the most part, really even on the arm? No, not really. Um, it does contribute, but not really for these for this case. So the answer is deltoid. So the deltoid, your shoulder, that's about the region where you get the most proximal to anything else on the arm. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. And I realized that this question was kind of because of the pectoralis. You know, if you do bench press, pectoralis does contribute a little bit. On my exams for the multiple choice and the practical. I'm not giving you trick questions. There's going to be one definite answer. Okay? If you if you've studied and you know your stuff, you know, you watch these videos, look at the PowerPoints, all that stuff, um, there will be a, a clear direct answer. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So at this point, 
that's all there is to this uh, PowerPoint. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, split into some groups. Okay. Um, in fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a five-minute break? Let's take a break. I know how people um, they don't like to sit still for a while. So if you if you need to go grab a drink of any kind, we'll come back here and remember the groups you're in. Um, part of the room is going to be working with the banana. The other one is going to be working with the models, kind of taking them apart, see how they work, um, and then we'll switch. Okay. So probably what we'll do, I'll explain the banana when we get back. I'll explain it so you'll know what to do. But essentially what we're going to do is um, you're going to look with the banana with respect to planes. Okay. I want you to kind of get an understanding of what the plane is. I'll explain everything, so why don't we at this point just take a five-minute break. Okay. So if you need to go to the restroom, you're free to do that. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 